I'm at the stage where I've wired up the load cell bridge and I've made careful to immobilize all of the wires so that they aren't changing resistance too much. I'm running the multimeter application to measure the voltages that I'm getting from the uh, locations on my circuit. These input voltages here and here I've connected to pins A3 and A4 so that I can measure the difference between them using the multimeter sketch. The output over here I've connected over to pin A1 because that's also one that gets printed out by the multimeter sketch. I've connected the uh, reference voltage for the pseudo ground from here over to pin A2 so that I can read that in as well when I write my own sketch later. So let's see what's happening when I put a load onto the load cell. We've got these strain gauges represented here by resistors in our bridge and we should see voltages over here of somewhere in the mid-range between our power supply voltage and ground. And sure enough they're both very close to each other and somewhere in the middle around about 1.8. So let's press down on the load cell and we don't see much change in the absolute value of those voltages but we do see the difference between them changes from around 8 millivolts down to around 5 millivolts. So very small change there. If I push up on the load cell, the end of the load cell, we see it goes up to a higher value on the difference. So we're seeing very small changes. If we had a good quality multimeter, we could measure those millivolt level voltages a little more accuracy, with a little more accuracy. However, we're relying on our amplifier to give us the output, and it's going over to uh, pin A1. So if I push down, I'll watch V1 go from 2.4 to 2.28, 2.26. So I'm seeing an actual measurable change in voltage there. And then when I take the load off, it comes back. Likewise, if I push up, I'm seeing that number increasing. Okay, I've got my code running here, and I'm just putting out the data I really need. This is time in seconds. This is the instantaneous measurement of mass. And this is the smooth measurement of mass. I've got uh, two, value, two sets of values here for inputs from uh, A1 and A2. I've got the basic ones, and I've got the smooth values that I've taken over time. And I'm calculating the mass and the smooth mass using these constants b and c. And initially I've set b equal to 0 and c equal to 1. So all I'm getting for the mass is the difference between a1 and a2 in the integer units for the analog read. So if I push down, the values go down. And if I pull up, the values go up. And if I leave it unloaded, I should get values that are relatively stable. Now there's really noise in this because there's some variability in the resistance, but it looks like 8210 is a reasonable guess for what I'm getting on average out of the smooth value. So let's set B equal to 8210. We compile and let's see what comes out now. I get numbers that are relatively close to zero for no load. If I push down, they go negative. If I pull up, they go positive. And then with no load, back to somewhere near zero, but with quite a bit of noise.
if I hang a one kilogram weight on the end, I'm getting an average there of, let's call it negative 430. So to make the math come out right, I'll set C equal to 1,000 grams divided by negative 430, the value I'm getting now. And after compiling, I see it's coming back with some noisy values, but values that are close to 1,000 grams of load. If I take that load off, we go back to a number that's close to zero. Now for a transient load. Grab some data and copy it to a spreadsheet. If I apply that load suddenly with the button pushed, if I zoom in on the transient, I can see something that looks like some rapid oscillations. Zoom in even more, and I can see a decaying sinusoid on the blue line. The green line is my smoothed version, and it doesn't show quite as much of an excursion over the load and then back under it.